How can you make teaching come alive and be more engaging? This is a question that has been asked repeatedly and there have been lot of answers. Through this video, I want to add one more answer to that list which is Wolfram Virtual Labs. These are open educational resources in the form of interactive courseware that are used to explain different concepts in the classroom. We will be going through one such lab from our college thermal library. This library was developed in collaboration with Politecnico di Torino and it contains labs on heat and mass transfer concepts. We tried to make sure that the content can be followed by anyone with basic thermodynamic knowledge. On downloading this library, you will get a Mathematica notebook. This notebook contains a description of two labs, one for room heating and one for refrigeration cycle. Each of them has an illustration of one of the exercises, like this one, where you can drag sliders to perform fast sensitivity analysis. In this session, let's focus on the room heating lab. On clicking the try the lab button, the lab is automatically downloaded and opens up in a new window. Have you ever wondered what the thermal power of the radiator in your house should be to guarantee thermal comfort or how the ambient conditions affect your room temperature? To answer these questions, it is important to understand the thermal behavior of different components in your house. This lab has the ambition to model the most significant components of a house and combine them to see how your room temperature changes with ambient temperature fluctuations. We first begin by observing the thermal behavior of a multi-layer wall crossed by a heat flux normal to its surface. The wall consists of three layers in series, insulation, brick and insulation respectively. As a first approximation, the thermal response of this configuration can be studied by a one-dimensional lumped parameters model in which only heat conduction through the wall is considered. In the following figure, we see how the thermal conductivity of the different materials affects the temperature distribution inside the wall at fixed layers thickness. There is a first interesting behavior that can be noticed here. If we consider typical values for the thermal insulating and brick layers, namely 0.07 watt per meter Kelvin and 0.7 watt per meter Kelvin respectively, we observe a large temperature rise across the insulation layer. Whereas the temperature rise across the brick layer is only minimal, even if the thickness of the brick layer is three times that of the insulation ones. In fact, the law of heat conduction states that at fixed heat flux, temperature gradients are linearly proportional to thermal resistance, which can be here determined as a ratio between the layer thickness and thermal conductivity. Similarly, in the following sections, you will add other components such as windows, radiators and people. Let us now explore our final model where we put everything together and observe the thermal behavior of the room. We will use Wolfram Alpha to get temperature data of one example day during the winter season of room as a case study and use it to define the average external temperature required by our complete room plus radiator model. The following plot shows the temperature variation for a span of about 9 hours. The data can then be fed to our model. Thanks to an intuitive graphical user interface, the user can now perform fast sensitivity analysis to access the effect of model parameters on the room temperature. For example, in this figure, the room reference temperature, the heat capacity of the room and the solar irradiance can be changed to explore their effect on the on-off cycles of the radiator. The overall energy consumption by the heating system is also estimated during the day. Here, the students can appreciate the energy saving potential 
of decreasing the room reference temperature. For instance, decreasing it by just 1 degree centigrade during the heating season leads to a whooping reduction of more than 16 kilowatt hour from 53 kilowatt hour to 37 kilowatt hour. This graphical interface also shows importance of an adequate sizing of the heating system to guarantee stable comfort conditions during the whole day. In this lab, you saw how we started with trivial models and ended up observing a non-trivial example. The students as well as teachers have access to all the system models used in the labs, where they can learn how these models were created and try to create new models or to refine the existing ones. To explore these labs further, you can download the College Thermal Library from the System Modeler Library Store. Existing ways of teaching using only presentations and Blackboard have no doubt worked for a long time. We believe that this teaching approach is still required to get a full preliminary understanding of the physical systems. Using virtual labs, this approach can be assisted by the real-time simulation of the systems to get a fast, hands-on experience on their actual operating conditions. Moreover, creating these virtual labs require no prior knowledge of low-level coding, which is a plus for students or teachers without a solid programming background. If you are a teacher and you want your students to experience innovative learning processes, take an extra step to transform your courses with the help of flexible, intuitive, and high-level programming of the Wilfram language and its modeling environments. If you have any ideas or questions on how you could improve your teaching capacities, do contact us at virtuallabs at the ratewilfram.com.